Welcome back, guys. We're gonna be doing a little bit of things fast forward and in regular speed. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This is my trusty steel farm boss that I have, and I love it. Yeah, it's a little undersized for certain things, but it works great for what I need it for. So at the time of filming, the snow was probably about three feet deep, and it was pretty floppy. So when I step off the tree, I sink either over my knees or up to my waist, depending on if there's a drift or not. A lot of the times when I'm out dropping trees, I'll bring my little hatchet, and I'll use that to take all the limbs off the trees as I go. But today, because I'm filming, I wanted to get it done as quickly as possible. In the winter time, I just bring whole logs in. It's just a little easier on me. If I cut them into rounds, they wind up falling off the trailer. But if I take them all in long sections, I can get back to the house without dropping them, generally. I am out in the woods behind the property, probably about a half mile away, collecting some spruce. We predominantly heat with spruce in the winter time with a little birch thrown in. And this video is a little bit of a response to some not so fun emails I've gotten recently. More so after we did the one with the chimney fire. Everybody's screaming and hollering, that's what I get, that's what I deserve because I burn spruce. They say spruce is a wet wood, it's this, it's that, can't be burned. Well, that's not the case. Spruce burns just fine. What you have to watch for is making sure it's dry. You also need to make sure, like what I cut, is beetle kill spruce. You need to make sure it doesn't have a lot of pitch on the outside of the bark. So a lot of times when we get the wood back to the house, I peel the bark off, or I'll knock off the spots to get a lot of sap on it. Usually where creosote gets formed in the chimney is from a few different things. Wet wood, that's the big thing, wet wood. The other is not burning your fire hot enough using spruce, but that wasn't the issue. What was the issue is we were burning it low. Why? It was just cold enough to make it uncomfortable in the house, but too warm to get a raging fire going to keep, to keep a proper fire burning. You want your, your flue gases to be a certain temperature as they're going up the flue, and that's gonna stop it from creating creosote. It's one of the ways. So this video is kind of dedicated to the, those that Send me the emails. Um, there's a lot of places here in Alaska that they do not have anything but spruce. So by some of y'all's thinking, they should all be dead and all the houses should be burned to the ground because they burn spruce. Not true. The further north you go, the less deciduous trees there are. Here, we're kind of blessed with having a mixture. We have a lot of spruce. Black spruce, white spruce, mostly white spruce in this area, and birch. We do have some cottonwood thrown in and maybe some aspens here and there. But the big things that's burned here are the spruce and the birch. I have probably about eight cords of birch cut. Uh, about half of that is seasoned, half of it is not. I generally cut my birch in a dead of winter. Why? Because it's been proven that the sap falls to the roots after about a week or two of hard freezes. I've been doing that for a number of years now up here, and it has worked great. It's cut my drying time in half. I can cut a piece of birch down in the middle of wintertime, and it'll show maybe 33% moisture. By the following spring, it's down to about 23. By the fall, it's all the way down to 18. I won't burn anything that's over 20. 
and that's what most wood stove places are going to tell you to do. As you see, I've got a fair size spruce on the ground, cut into lengths. We're going to load it on the trailer and bring it up to the house, and I'll cut it up into uh, rounds there. And then we're going to split it and stack it. Talk to you in a little bit. Now birch bark does contain a lot of oils and therefore you want to try to avoid burning the bark as much as you possibly can. There's a reason why everybody uses it for, as tinder. It catches fast and it burns quick. Recently I started removing the bark from the birch trees. What I'll do is in the middle of winter time when I drop it, I'll limit and then I'll take my chainsaw and scour a long mark the whole way down the tree. And then in the springtime when I start bucking it up, it comes up nice and easy and I just peel it off like it's nothing. Earlier I mentioned that spruce does create creosote. It creates it in a few different ways. One of course is burning green wood. You never want to do that unless it's dire situation. Burning it low and slow is going to be another way that causes creosote buildup. Not having the proper chimney set up is going to cause creosote buildup. If you have single walled with multiple elbows, you're probably going to build up a little bit more than the average person's going to. Always make sure that you keep your stove running at the optimal temperature to keep a clean burn. Spruce will burn fast and hot. So, you got to take that into consideration as well. One thing I always tell people, make sure you have a moisture meter to check the moisture content of any wood that you have and any wood that you might purchase. There are a lot of people out there that will willingly sell you this year's cut firewood stating that it's seasoned. Always have a moisture meter. Another big thing is to make sure that you take care of your chimney. Make sure you sweep it on a regular basis, whether it be once a year, every six months. In my case, because I'm crazy, I tend to do it monthly. I don't get a lot out, but I always know that my chimney is fine and I'm not going to have another risk of fire after that last one. Anyways, let's get back to the show. Looks like I'm almost done loading up the trailer. As you can see, I have the trailer loaded and it's strapped down and ready to go. I just got to move my saw and start and go. But first, I wanted to show you something. This is my moisture meter. This thing is pretty dang accurate and it's what I bought when I installed the Blaze King in the cabin. With that stove, it has to be below 20% moisture or you're gonna have major problems because of the system that it is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the moisture content of this spruce. On one side of this thing here, you have a low and a high. So we're gonna put the low in first. So we're pushing on the high. It's at 16% moisture. And here, which is the lowest part of the tree, it's at 18%. And this tree was just cut. The thing is, is these trees have all been dead for some time. They've all been dead for a while because of the beetles. I would rather have them gone off the property and around my area because one fire here and this whole place is gone. There are hundreds of dead spruce trees here. Not right behind me, but all over the place. So I'm doing my part to get them all gone and keep our property safe. Not just our property, all the properties around here. There are approximately 10 other pieces of property on my trail system, but nobody uses them except for Mac. None of them have cabins, none of them have anything. Anyways, let's get back to the cabin and split some of this up. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking, and I set myself up on soft snow and not on my regular pack trail. And you see what happens. And we just did. It's not hard to get unstuck if you know what you're doing. It's gonna be fun. This time of year, 
I run all over the place looking for trees and then I keep going over the trail to make sure it gets packed. And after about a week of doing that, I'll go out and start cutting down those trees that I noticed. It did. It did get you woo woo woo. All right, so we made it back to the property, even though we got stuck. I decided to take that really big piece off there. I decided to disconnect the snow machine from the trailer, go forward and back it up over to an area that I already packed. That was my own fault for not packing it ahead of time. Okay, so it's been a few days since I started this video. We had a bad windstorm come through and then we got about another foot of snow. So we've got a cut, we're gonna split it and we're gonna check the moisture as we go. So let's get down to it. And I am using my Fisker ax. And I know some of you guys are asking, why aren't you using a log splitter? I like to split by hand every now and then. Keeps me in somewhat shape, aside from round. We can try with the old model in a minute. All right, so the log splitter is unburied. Let's get set up and we'll do some more splitting. All right, so that tree split up. Not all of it. The smallest stuff I keep are putting under the hillbilly hot tub for when we need to melt snow to make water for the cisterns. So let me grab my moisture meter here and we'll see what the moisture content is of this. Be right back. All right, so this is my moisture meter and we're gonna check the moisture content of this. I know there's a few spots that are wet and I'll show you why. Now right, you see how there's a little bit of discoloration here. I have a feeling there's gonna be a little bit of moisture in there. So let's see. That's at 21%. All right, so let me get down to stacking. You like my hat? That's a Rebecca Touch by Yarn hat, and I love it. Here are these logs that we just brought in from outside. Now there's gonna be a little bit of moisture on the surface because that's the nature of the beast. But, 
is still below. I don't know if you can see that. I'll get a little closer up there. You go. Now let's put it in there and I'll bring it closer. So right there on low it says 15%. So let's hit high. And it's saying 16%. So, so that is perfect for burning in my eyes. Now if you go to the dead center, I know somebody's going to say something about that. And it'd probably be a little off because there's snow on it, but that's okay. We're going to see. Low. It said 14%. High. 16%, but that's because we need to go to the low setting to show that it's 14. Alright, so I'm going to let that one go over there. It's going to melt the snow. Now let's check a piece that's been split open a little bit. That says 13%, so we know there's no point of going to high. Because we already know it's dry. And this is white spruce, guys. This is to kill the myth that you cannot burn spruce, that it's too wet and you're going to burn down your house. Here's the big one. And this is here in a little bit. As soon as I get the snow off it, it's going to go right into the fireplace and we'll see if the house will burn down. It's at 14%. And you can see that's high. And of course it's at 16 because we know it's already at 14 so we know it's at the lower range. We'll go down to the other end where I cut it at the tree. And this area probably going to be off because it was in the snow. It's at 15% and it's at 25%. But I bet if that's let to dry a little bit because of the snow It'll be at a different rating here in a little bit. We're going to see. Check down here again. Low is at 14%. High is at 16%. So we know that the issue down at that end is caused by the snow on the log itself. So we're going to let them warm up and we're going to throw them in the fireplace and see if there's any issues. Be back in a bit. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me testing that log again, but when I retested it, it tested the same as the other end. I let the snow dry off of it for about two days, and I threw it in the stove, and it burned just fine. House is still here. We haven't burned down, and this was filmed back in no November, I believe. So, the myth of burning your house down just because you burn spruce is BS. Don't let anybody tell you differently. People do it all over the world in northern climates and have done so for thousands of years. So at that, I'm out of here for today. Don't forget that we have our live every Monday night starting at 4 o'clock Alaska Standard Time and that is in the p.m. and we are followed by Adam and Phyllis from Alaska Cut the Cord at 5.45 p.m. So make sure you come show up for us, hang out with us for a little bit and then go over to happy hour with Adam and Phyllis at Alaska Cut the Cord. You guys have a great day, and we'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye.